mabahala ang nangyayari. Sana hindi mangyari ang impeachment kay VP Inday Sara. Baka magdulot pa ito na mas malaking kaguluhan sa bansa. Mga kababayan, naglalaro na nga di umano raw ang mga alipores sa tongreso para impeach di umano si VP Inday Sara. Dahil sa sunod-sunod na isyo nga raw laban sa Pangulo at sa kanilang pamilya. Kung magtatagumpay nga ang mga pulpolitiko na to at aabot sa Senado na may balimbing pa na leader na atat na atat din agad humawak sa posisyon ni Inday, magtatagumpay kaya sila. Pero may pag-asa pa dahil sa suporta ng ibang senador. Ano sa tingin nyo? Magwawagi ba ang impeachment o magiging simula ng araw ba to ng EDSA 3? Pagpaparinig nga tuloy na mga netizen. <laughs> Kung tutuloy ang impeachment, baka maging simula ng bagong EDSA. Kailangan nating bantayan ang mga susunod na hakbang. Mukhang may agenda ang mga nasa kongreso. Dapat tayong maging mapagmatsyag at siguraduhin ang mga desisyon ay para sa kapakanan ng bayan. At bago nga tayo magpatuloy for today's video, ihit mo na agad yung like button para sa mga susunod pang ibabalita. By the way, here's your Chikabe updates. At kung hindi ka pa nga nakapag-subscribe, isubscribe na yan. Talaganap ngayon na very scandalous move na mga sipsip at alipores ni Speaker Tambaluslos na ipa-impeach sa House of Representatives si Inday Sara at iakyat nila sa Senado para tanggalin ng lubusan sa pagkapangalawang pangulo ng ating bansa at mawawala na ang pinakaseryosong political threat sa poder ng mga Marcoses at ng kanyang mga alipores. Tunghaya natin ito sa ang ulat na ito and then magbibigay ka ng iyong pananaw hinggil sa ganito kabastusan at kaiskandalusong hakbang ng mga sipsip na mga kongresistang bayaran sa loob ng kongreso na puro naman alipores ni Martin Romualdez. Tunghaya natin ito. Bukal sa pagpuna sa mga kapalpakan ng Administrasyong Marcos Jr., si Vice President Sara Duterte at isa na rito ang Flood Control Project na matatanda ang ipinagmayabang pa ni Marcos Jr. sa ikatlo niyang State of the Nation Address. Pero ang pagpunang ito ni VP Sara, ginantihan ng mga kaalyadong kongresista ni Marcos Jr. Pinutakti nila ang Vice Presidente ng kabikabilang kritisismo dahilan para lumitaw ang balitang nagsimula na ang proseso ng pagpapatalsi kay Duterte. Sinabi ni Attorney Harry Roque, hindi malabong pumabor sa pagpapa-impeach kay VP Sara ang mayorya ng Kongreso na hawak ni Speaker Martin Romualdez. Kung mapapansin mo, talagang uh, ang mga kongresista o do pare-parehong pinagsasalita ng kanilang PR, kung sino man yung PR nila, ay panay ang banat ngayong kay VP Sara para sanggain yung mga binatong mga paratang ni BP Sara. Mukhang sisimula nila ang proseso ng impeachment kay BP Sara bilang gante dito sa mga binigkas na salita ni BP Sara laban sa gobyerno. No? Double-edged sword yan. Okay? Kasi alam natin na bagawat may numero kayo dyan sa, uh, sa, sa Kongreso at lahat kayo hawak na ating speaker na madali yung impeach yan. Pero git ni Roque, kahit pa nga pumabor ang karamihan sa kongresista na patalsikin si VP Sara, ay sigurado namang mahihirapang ilusot ang impeachment sa Senado. Unang-una alam nyo naman, mahirapan yan sa Senado. Dahil lalo-lalo na kung ang gagamitin yung basehan ay yung confidential funds na nakabinbin pa sa Korte Suprema. So paano naman aakto ang Senado sa isang legal issue na nandoon na nakabinbin na sa Korte Suprema. Mm. Hindi ba dapat antayin muna yung resulta noon dahil yun naman ang katungkulan ng hudikatura. No? Itaguyod ang uh, supremacy ng ating saligang batas na sinasabi ng mga petitioners dun sa Korte Suprema na linabag daw ang uh, saligang batas nung binigyan ni Marcos Jr. ang ating Inday Sara ng 221 million na parang 125 doon ay Uh, confidential fund na nagastos ng mga satellite offices. Eh kung titignan mo naman saan napunta yung mga nagastos na yan, yan ay lahat napunta sa tulong sa taong bayan. No? Yan naman talaga ang uh, paggamit ng confidential fund. Dagdag pa ni Roque, bukod sa confidential funds na kanilang ipinupukol kay VP Sara, ay posibleng dagdagan din nila ang mga basihan para sa planong impeachment laban sa Vice Presidente. Marami pa raw mga iba ibang mga basihan ang isasama nila dyan. Nandyan yung sa procurement daw ng ghost textbooks. No? Eh, ang alam po, napakaingat 
ni BP Sara pagdating dyan sa procurement sa DepEd. Dahil nga, nung siya ay pumasok, eh meron ng iskandalo na tungkol sa laptop na kinabilangan pa nga nung uh, chair ng Committee on Appropriations sa si Zaldico, pero wala naman nangyari. No? Magkaroon lang na ingay, wala naman nangyari. Ewan ko kung uh, meron talagang makakasuhan dyan. Sa huli, sinabi ni Roque na karapatan naman ni VP Sara bilang opisyal ng pamahalaan na punahin ang mga pagkakamalit pagkukulang ni Marcos Jr. bilang bukas naman dapat sa kritisismo ang sino mang halal ng taong bayan. Ayun. Sas, ano po ang inyong uh, reaksyon at ang uh, inyong magiging pahayag dito sa iskandalusong maniobra sa marum maruming laro sa politika na mga bata-bata ni Martin Romualdez upang lamang makapagsipsip ay inaha hinaharas ng impeachment complaint ang ating busy presidente. Well, uh, ito'y nag-ugat dun sa mga dun sa sinabi ni um, Vice President Inday Sara tungkol sa flood control project, no? Mm. Um, pero malino naman yung yung uh, inilabas niyang pahayag na hinalimbawa niya sa Davao, no mayor siya, sinabihan niya yung NEDA doon sa kanilang region na magkaroon ng uh, pag-aaral para makagawa ng master plan ng flood, and contr flood control and management sa Davao City para yung city engineer at yung DPWH hindi na nag-iimbento ng kung ano-anong flood control uh, project. And true enough, uh, ito ay ginawa on po ano pa nga ito eh funded pa nga ito ng uh, JICA ah, no ng JAP ng JAP o oh, oh, ng JICA ng it's a Japan funded um uh, master plan ng Davao City at ang sinabi niya ready na ito July 2020 tayo pa pondo na lang hinihingi hindi ba so malinaw kung sino may kakulangan doon <laughs> hindi ba hmm. Tama. So ngayon, sila ngayon ay nasasaktan sa kritisismo ni Vice Pre President Inday Sara Pero alam naman natin, lalo na tayong mga sumusubaybay sa mga Duterte Ang lahat, na, lahat ng ito ay sumisipsip sa mga Duterte Nung panahon na si Pangulong Duterte ang nakaupo Tama. Alam natin kung sino ang mga lumalapit sa mga Duterte sa kung ano-ano Mula sa pamilyang Marcos hanggang sa kahit sinong congressman na nandyan ngayon, itong impeachment nila, parang pikon na pikon itong mga kongresista natin sa sinasabi ni, ni, ni Inday Sara. Ano, bakit ba kayo pikon na pikon? Na pikon na pikon ba kayo dahil sinabihan kayo ni pang, ng dating Pangulong Duterte na ilabas ninyo, ilatag ninyo ang libro ng kongreso para makita ng taong bayan hmm. kung saan nyo ginagastos ang pera nila mula hanggang sa huling sentavo? Di ba dyan naman nagkaugat-ugat lahat yung mga uh, mga hinanakit ninyo sa mga Duterte ngayon? Di ba dahil si, dun sa statement na yun ni Pangulong Duterte? Ngayon naman, na, nagagalit kayo dahil sinasabi nyo na ito si um, Madam Vice President, kinikritisize si Pangulong uh, Bongbong Marcos. Pero anong gusto nyo gawin niya? Eh, tungkol ito sa flood control at malinaw na ang Davao City ay may existing flood control na na-funded ng Japan. Ang feasibility study nakahanda na ng July 2023, uh, eh hindi nyo man ito pinondohan. Tama, klaro. So, ibig sabihin, Sas, uh, before kay Pasa kay Mamorin, malinaw na ito isang uh, uh, political maneuver. Uh, ang layunin iharas, ipahiya ang busy presidente the way they did the consistent systematic attacks against her doon sa confidential fund uh, to the point yes. na ginasto siya on the floor at pinahiya yeah. sa buong bansa, ginasto siya ng tudo-tudo, isang buwan halos na yun ang headline ng mga corporate big big time na mga media. Uh, samantalang mm. ang busy presidente walang nagtanggol maliban sa uh, SMNI kay Pastor Kiboloy at sa tatay niya at tayo na mga nag, uh, nagiging independent observers na. So sa tingin mo, Sas, maliban sa ito isang political gimmick to diffuse yung attention mula sa kabulukan ng gobyerno ni Marcos Jr., iskandalo sa droga, at paglaganap ng uh, hindi maampat-ampat na paglalim ng kahirapan, kawalan ng trabaho, paglugmok ng income ng mamamayan, at ang uh, down spiral move patungo sa isang mala, malagim na economic, economic crisis dahil sa crisis ni Marcos ngayon. Ito ba ay magsisilbi sa kabutihan ng kanilang agenda na mapukusan si 
Sara Duterte, maging defensive sila at madipuse yung atake ng mamamayan doon sa paniningil sa kabulukan ng gobyerno ni Marcos Jr. How do you think about that? Ka, ka Eric, no, this is like what happened to former Vice President Binay. Mm -hmm. Alam naman ng lahat noong 2010, nung nanalo si uh, Benigno Aquino III at si Binay bilang president, Vice President, Everyone is already uh, thinking that Bina will be the next president mm. because of the popularity, etc. So, anong ginawa nila noon kay Bina? Hindi ba um, nag-raise sila ng iba't ibang controversia for self, uh, ang, di ba? And then eventually, yung mga controversia na yun, hindi naman ito nagbunga. No, hindi ito, um, hindi naman nakulong si former Vice President Bina. Hindi ba? Mm. Wala, wala rin si wala rin to pipitan. At sino yung mga gumawa noon kay Binay? Hindi ba sila rin ngayon? Yeah. <laughs> sila rin ngayon yung umaatake kay Vice President uh, in Daisara. This is for 2028. No, nakasi nakikita nila na ang taas-taas pa rin ni Madam Vice President in Daisara kahit ang mga uh, binab sa kabila ng binabato sa kanyang kontrobersya. Hindi ba yung yung huling uh, balita ng Manila Times uh, kahit bumaba na raw ang rating ni Vice President Day Sara siya pa rin ang top one choice for President ng mga Pilipino of yeah. course bumaba yung rating niya kasi nga syempre may supporters dyan ni uh, loyal supporters dyan ni um, Pangulong Bongbong Marcos na ayaw siya dahil nga she's not towing the line mm. of the pulveronic mm. government mm. Ama. so klaro ma'am Lorraine your interaction sa iba pang issue yeah. maliban sa yes. impeachment scandal. No, no, ano, I was gonna ask you also, Sas, no, kasi one of those things that really, uh, well, kind of galled me is that ito mga, mga congressman na ito, no, kasi if you, if you, um, uh, multiply, no, there's three, there are about 300 uh, congressmen. 320. Uh, yeah, let's just say that uh, each of them got 150,000 votes and you multiply it by, let's say, 300, that's 45 million votes. And the vice president, so put together, put together 45 million lahat yan, no? Let's say, something like that, no? Because I want to make a point. And here's one person got 32 million votes, plus, plus. So I find it particularly galling na itong mga ito are mga, mga lapdogs, no? Mga, mga kung anong iutos ni Martin Romaldez. We, we've seen that, no? Kitang-kita kita naman talaga. Hindi naman nila tinatago, di ba? Hindi naman tinatago. Tsaka age of information. Kitang-kita talaga natin na walang dignidad at walang prinsipyong itong mga ito. So, yung, yung nakikita ko dito, a bunch of congressmen with about 150,200 at the most votes, no? Is trying to impeach, take away the vice president, which to me, is uh, paglalabagyan ng demokrasya kasi ang inihalal ang vice president ng 32 million, di ba? So ang sinasabi natin, boses ng taong bayan yan at nakikita natin na sila binabaliwala nila, yes. di ba? Uh, your reaction to that, Sas? Mm. Yung point ni Ma'am Nandereis? Well, ano mang gustong gawin nila kay Vice President Inday Sara, eh magpasailalim siya kay um, Pangulong Marcos. Kung, kung hindi ito naaalala ng mga um, kongresista ang sumusubaybay kay um, Bumabatikos ngayon kay Madam Vice President Inday Sara, pero alam na alam namin ito mga Duterte supporters, mm -hmm. ang bentahe mm -hmm. noong 2022 elections mm -hmm. ay this is a joint government of BBM and Sara Duterte. Mm -hmm. Now, um, kaya bumenta nga yun. Sa tingin nyo ba, mananalo yun si BBM na hindi, na hindi ganun ang bentahe? Mm -hmm. Hindi ba? So, ang ano niyan, hindi nyo siya nanalo vice president. Sabay nilang papatakbuhin ng bansa. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Natalo nga yan kay Lenny Robredo eh. Mm -hmm. Tama ka. O. Oh. Hindi ba? Sabihin nyo, dinaya or whatever. Kung dinaya man, 200,000 plus lang yung lamang. Ano ba naman yun? Mm -hmm. Hindi ba? So, anong ginawa nila kay Inday Sara? ba? From from the moment na umupo sila, una nakikipagplastikan pa kayo. Tapos, bigla pa lang, the next year, pagkatapos ng wala pang isang taon, kung ano-ano nung pinagagawa niyo sa kanya, itong itong confidential funds na ito, eh, pati bong to ng 
office of the president, hindi naman magkakaroon yun ng transfer kung hindi naman ito pinayagan ng office of the president, pati hindi, pati hindi tinitira ni Martin Romualdez yung pinsan niya. Yeah, exactly. At <laughs> sasa, diba? at, uh, Bakit hindi niya patira? Mm, at napakalinaw okay. sasa, there, before sumambulat yung iskandalo, uh, Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin was trying to defend uh, the Vice President about the 125 million. Kasi sabi niya, uh, it was requested, but the one that released and approved it, kami din sa Office of the President, because we see it as necessary. Dahil nagbubuo siya ng opisina niya, she needs a lot of uh, support para mabuo ang nationwide satellite offices, among others. But all of a sudden, nang nagkumpas na si yes. Martin, at kinonsinti na ni Marcos at ng asawa niya na atakihin at gorgorin na politically si Inday Sara, tumahimik at hindi na pinagtanggol ng Office of the President si Inday Sara doon sa 125 million release na sila din na nag-approve. At samantalang hindi kinikwestiyon ang napakalaki almost 5 billion na, na confidential fund ni Marcos Jr. Samantalang kukurampot ang napunta sa kay Vice President Sara Duterte and it was complied with reports sa COA. Uh, at ito ay yeah. hindi naman na-find ng kuha na adverse ang finding sa paggastos nito. Pero sas ngayon, bakit uh, ito pa rin ang ipinapalabas ng uh, grupo ni Martin Romualdez at mga atake nila sa kay Sara Duterte? Ngayon kumakalat may in-include na sila na atake at uh, iniugnay na siya na siya ay isang silent agent ng China. Ngayong umaga lang, inilabas. Si Sas yun! In, inilabas. Sas, ikaw yun! <laughs> inilabas nila, Ma'am Lorraine, nila Paulo Ortega, ng mga uh, young guns, mga kongresista, tumam na mga bata. Yung mga sabi mo, so young, yet you're so corrupt. <laughs> yes, Sas, go ahead. Mga Ortega? Oo. Oh. <laughs> Nag-presko niya ta sila kanina sa sunginang umaga. Ano to, agent ng China? Alam niyo ba pinagsasasabi ninyo? Unang-una, unang-una, kayong mga nandyan, alam nyo ba yung issue? Alam nyo ba yung South China si conflict in the first place? Mm. I'm pretty sure none of you do not understand the issue at all. Mm. Mm. No? We bet on that. Diba? Yan, ang, yan ang katotohanan dyan. Wala pa akong nakikita congressman na pag narinig ko, eh sasabihin ko, ay ito may matututunan ako dito. Mm. Wala kasi nga hindi nila alam. I'm pretty sure Kalorin and Ka Eric, mm. none of these young congressmen ever read the 2016 South China Sea arbitration at all. Correct. Because kung nabasa nila ito, hindi ganyan ang iyong mga actuations mm. ngayon. Mm. Dahil Sus. if you are up for some you are up for some reckoning. Ikalawa, yeah. ano ba yung binabato ninyo kung hindi nagtagumpay ang 125 million confidential funds, babalik kay sa China. Mm. Pag hindi nag no, nag tagumpay yung China, babalik kayo sa 125 million funds. Hindi ba? So, anong, ano talaga ang gusto ninyong marating sa inyong pambabarubal kay Inday Sara? Ikatlo, kayong mga young congressman dyan, kahit yung mga luma na, siguro duhin ninyo na ang mga negosyong associated sa inyo at mga campaign funders ninyo mm. ay hindi mga importers sa China. Yeah. Okay. Lalo na yung mga may construction business dyan. Tama. Dahil mula pa ako, <laughs> mula pa ako, hanggang sa dulo ng construction cycle, karamihan dyan ay mga materialist na ini-import sa China, ini-smuggle yung pa nga yung iba eh. Oo, oh, tama. Di ba? Tama ka. Correct ka, Sas. So, <laughs> Ganun so, kay rito. <laughs> So sas yung sinasabi mo no hindi naman nagbasa itong mga ito for instance mm. no yung so yung kalidad nakikita natin di ba nakikita natin na I amin mean, lantaran talaga yung kababaan ng kalidad ng pag-iisip at ano no yung kasi siguro ang nakikita ko itong Marcos administration wala namang hinihingi na kalidad yeah. di ba so ang nangyari sa gobyerno natin ngayon puro mga operators, yes. di ba? Puro ano, puro political uh, ambitions, political goals at puro pagsisipsip na natuloy ang 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 nawalan talaga dito ay ang Pilipino kasi yeah. hindi tayo pinagsisilbihan. Ginagago tayo, walang respeto. Kaya gustong-gusto ko yung yung statement ng Vice President na kung saan sila ay na, they take offense, di ba? So so basically that's that's all, all I need to tell you right now yeah. in my response, no? Sas. Thank you, Ma'am Lorraine. Yeah. May, may hmm. lumabas ka na pahayag 
you corrected the Senate President Chisis Codero sa post mo. Nakita ko yeah. kahapon, uh, ko nang nakita, na sinabi mo, e, ikaw nga, Chis, 18 years, senador, at ngayon, Senate President pa. Bakit mo kuno question so, ang uh, mga nagawa ng uh, uh, previous ago, government na anim na taon, uh, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng ganito kamayor na malubhang pagbaha kagaya ng nangyari sa Karina? of a manifestation made by one of our colleagues here concerning a supposed to be prejudicial question, quote-unquote, relative to this chamber's lacking the required or appropriate procedure to amend or revise the 1987 Constitution, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, just as a manifestation, this representation already filed resolution number 941, a resolution adopting rules to amend and or revise the 1987 Constitution, Mr. President. And the submission of this representation, Mr. President, is that this should be tackled or addressed immediately by the Committee on Rules since it would supplant or supplement the gaps existing right now in the Senate rules of procedure, Mr. President. Just a manifestation, Mr. President. Yes, the majority yes. leaders. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We take note of the uh, manifestation of the distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. This was also, again, uh, the subject of uh, Senate Senator Escudero's uh, manifestation last February 28, Mr. President. I have here with me a copy of the gentleman, uh, uh, gen uh, gentleman's resolution, PS Resolution Number 941. In view of this, Mr. President, we'd like to state into the records that immediately after the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, agreement between this representation and uh, members of this uh, institution, including our uh, Senate minority leader, we immediately released, Mr. President, the notice of meeting of the Committee on Rules last February 29, and it is scheduled this Wednesday, Mr. President, March 6. And uh, we also take note of the resolution of the gentleman from uh, Cavite, PSR resolution number 941 uh, today, which was filed today, Mr. President, and uh, uh, which will be referred to the Committee on Rules. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, the majority leader. Does that satisfy our distinguished quality from Kavita. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journals of the 56th session Tuesday, February 27, 2024, and 57th session Wednesday, February 28, 2024, and consider the same as approved. There have been no objections to the motion. Motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. There have been no objections. We ask the Secretary to proceed with the reference of business. Bills on first reading, Senate number 2574, are now converting the Metro Naga Development Council into the Metro Naga Development Authority, defining its powers and functions, providing funds, therefore, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Storentino, De La Rosa, and Her Hercito. To the Committees on Local Government, Government Corporations, and Finance. 2576, an act standardizing the retirement benefits of justice judges and judiciary officials with judicial rank, salary and privileges, and appropriate funds, therefore, amending for the purpose RA 910 as amended by Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee of Civil Service, Justice and Finance. 2577, declaring the Verde Island Passage located in the province of Batangas, Merinduque, Occidental Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, and Romblon, an eco-tourism zone, Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee of Tourism, Environment, and Finance. 2578, protecting the rights of all workers, workers' organizations, and unions from interference by the employers, public authorities, or their agents, and providing penalties for violations thereof, Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resource Development. 2579, an act providing for the registration, regulation, and operation of cooperative banks, Senator Villar M. To the Committee on Banks, Cooperatives, and Ways and Means. Resolution, proposed Senate Resolution 939, directing the Senate Committee on Public Services to conduct an inquiry to assess the viability of imposing a mandatory comprehensive insurance coverage requirement for government vehicles by Senator Tulfo. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Report, Committee Report 211. Jointly by the Committees on Basic Education, Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality and Finance, on Senate Number 2575, with Senators Angara, Gachalian, Villanueva, 
Revilla Jr. and, and Ontiveros as authors, a knack ensuring the alignment of basic education and early childhood care and development, amending for the purpose RA 10410, otherwise known as the Early Years Act of 2013, appropriate in funds therefore, recommending its approval in substitution of Senate Numbers 1754 and 2029, sponsor, Senator Gachalian. To the calendar for our business. There's additional reference to business. Please proceed. Additional reference to business. Bills on first reading, Senate number 2580, extending the corporate life of the power sector, assets, and liabilities management corporation, amending for the purpose section 50 of RA 9136, otherwise known as the Electric Power Industry Reform Act of 2001 by Senator Tulfo. To the Committee on Government, Corporations, and Energy. 2581, declaring the 3rd of March of every year as a special day for the commemoration of Philippines-South Korea Friendship Day, Senator Pimentel III. To the Committee on Culture and Arts, Foreign Relations and Finance. Resolutions, a proposed Senate Resolution 940, directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry into the irregular disposition and sale of the National Food Authority repackaged rice stocks to certain rice traders at low prices, Senator Marcos. To the Committee's Accountability of Public Officers, Investigation, Agriculture, Food and Environment Reform. 941, resolution adopting rules to amend and or revise the 1987 Constitution, Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Rules. 942, resolution expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolences of the Senate of the Philippines on the death of highly acclaimed Filipino actress Jacqueline Jose on 2 March 2024, Senator Estrada. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move to consider on third reading Senate Bill number 2352. This is the bill on the Jail Integration Act. Printed copies of the measure were electronically distributed to the members on February 27, 2024, in compliance with the three-day rule in the Constitution. There be no objection. The motion is approved. We ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure and proceed with the roll call vote. An act transferring the control and supervision of the provincial and sub-provincial jails to the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. Roll call vote. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go. Senator Antiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. Yes. With 19 affirmative votes, zero negative votes, zero abstentions, Senator. Senate Bill Number 2352 is approved on third reading. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We congratulate our dear colleague, Senator Bato de la Rosa, who is also seeking the floor, Mr. President. May I ask that he be recognized, Mr. President? Yes, congratulations, our dear colleague. Senator Bato de la Rosa is recognized. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. President, Majority Leader. Mr. President, together with esteemed colleagues, Senate President Meg Subiri, Senator Bong Rebilla Jr., Senator J.B. Ejercito, and Majority Leader Senator Joel Villanueva, I wish to take this opportunity to thank this August Chamber. Today, Senate Bill Number 2352, or the Jail Integration Act, is approved on third reading. While delegation is perhaps the truest form of trustworthiness, it should not reach a point that it becomes more of a burden rather than a noble duty. When I defended this bill on the floor, Mr. President, interpolated by our ever-sharp deputy minority leader, Senator Riza Hontiveros, that was one of the fruits of that exchange. Indeed, <clears throat> by turning over the management and supervision of our provincial and sub-provincial jail, from the provincial government to the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, those jails stand to benefit not only from the expertise and world-class standards that the BJMP sets, to, sets for itself, but more importantly, from the BJMP's national programs. Also, as I have mentioned before, the LGOs will benefit from this measure too. They will be liberated from functions that tend to divide their attention and limited resources. 
such as these endeavors that may very well be performed by a government agency that specializes in these matters, such as the BGMP. <coughs> Correction and reformation take a great deal of time and expertise. As such, they should be delegated to agencies whose primary function has always been the rehabilitation of persons deprived of liberty or PDLs. When there is a unified, integrated way of dealing with PDLs, then we can also set a unified and integrated vision for them. This somehow gives them the message, the entire government is looking after you. Our laws have always acknowledged and recognized local authority and their ability to address community concerns. <coughs> However, it is our belief that special circumstances require special attention and dedication. We have always advocated for devolution and decentralization, but we also maintain our conviction that whenever necessary, whenever possible, we must take a more holistic approach to our government programs. To the BGMP headed by the competent leadership of Jail, di jail Director Roel S. Rivera, congratulations are in order. But more importantly, let this be concrete proof of how much your Senate trusts you. That popular saying shall always ring true. To whom much is given, much is also expected. Sa bawat provincial at sub-provincial jail na iti-turn over sa inyo, lagi niyong isa sa isip at isa sa puso. Kung ano ang ibig sabihin ito, may mga panibagong PDL na aasa sa kalinga ninyo. They may be deprived of liberty, but they should never be deprived of the basic human need to be properly looked after. Maraming salamat, Mr. President, at mga minamahal kong kasama, dahil kaisa ko kayo sa hangarin na ito. Thank you for supporting this vision. Maraming salamat, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Congratulations to, to you and to the, of course, the uh, BJMP family. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, this juncture, the following are House concurrent resolutions on amnesties that require the concurrence of this August chamber as provided for under the Constitution. Number one is House concurrent resolution number 19, granting amnesty to members of the Revolutionaryong Partido ng Manggagawa ng Pilipinas, Revolutionary Proletarian Army, Alex Bongkayao Brigade, RPMP, RPA, ABB. Number two, House Concurrent Resolution Number 21, granting amnesty to members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, MILF. And number three, House Concurrent Resolution Number 22, granting amnesty of members to members of the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF. Mr. President, at this juncture, and with the consent of the body, I move that we vote for adoption of House Concurrent Resolution Number 19. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection to the motion? There being none, House Concurrent Resolution Number 19 is hereby. Before we act, we'll ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. The Majority Leader read it already, so it's. Yes. <laughs> but we'll ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. Concurrent Resolution Concurring with Proclamation Number 403 of the President of the Republic of the Philippines, dated November 22, 2023, entitled Granting Amnesty to Members of the Revolutionarium Partido ng Mga Gawa ng Pilipinas. Revolutionary Proletarian Army, Alex Bongkayao Brigade, who have committed crimes punishable under the Revised Penal Code and Special Penal Laws in furtherance of their political beliefs. Please proceed with the roll call vote. Roll call vote. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachelian, Senator Go, Senator Antiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Rivilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, yes. Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. Yes. With 19 affirmative votes, zero negative votes, zero abstentions, House. Concurrent resolution number 19 is approved and adopted by the Senate.
Thank you very much, Mr. President. At this juncture, and with the consent of the body, I move that we vote for adoption of House Concurrent Resolution Number 21. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection, we ask Secretary to read the title of the measure and proceed with the roll call vote. Concurrent resolution concurring with Proclamation Number 405 of the President of the Republic of the Philippines, dated November 22, 2023, entitled Granting Amnesty to Members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front who have committed crimes punishable under the Revised Penal Code and Special Penal Laws in furtherance of their political beliefs. Roll call vote. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, yeah. Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, Senator Ontiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Rivilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, yes. Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With 19 affirmative votes, zero negative votes, zero abstentions, House Concurrent Resolution Number 21 is hereby adopted of, by the Senate. Thank you very much, Mr. President. This juncture, with the consent of the body, I move that we vote for adoption of House Concurrent Resolution Number 22. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, we ask Secretary to proceed with reading the title of the measure and the roll call vote. Concurrent resolution concurring with proclamation number 406 of the President of the Republic of the Philippines dated November 22, 2023, entitled Granting Amnesty to Members of the Moro National Liberation Front who have committed crimes punishable under the Revised Penal Code and Special Penal Laws in furtherance of their political beliefs. Roll call vote. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, Senator Antiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Ligarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, yes. Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With 19 affirmative votes, zero abstentions, zero negative votes, House Concurrent Resolution Number 22 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We congratulate our distinguished sponsor, Senator Jingoy Estrada, who is also seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Senator Estrada is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would like to place on record my sincere gratitude to my honorable colleagues for supporting the adoption of House Concurrent Resolutions 19, 21, and 22. Concurring with Presidential Proclamation Numbers 403, 405, and 406, which grants amnesty to the members of the Revolutionaryong Partido ng Manggagawa ng Pilipinas, Revolutionary Pro Proletarian Army, Alex Boncaya Brigade, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and the Moro National Liberation Front, respectively. The Congressional Concurrence to the aforementioned Presidential Proclamation signifies the Filipino people's support to the comprehensive peace efforts and genuine commitment of the government to attaining lasting peace. As your chairman of the Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, as of now, I am truly honored and privileged to sponsor these measures that will foster healing and social cohesion and will provide the window to end internal armed conflicts and rebellion, which have already cost the country a staggering amount of lost economic opportunities and the lives of countless Filipinos. We thank the esteemed members of this August Chamber under the leadership of Senate President Juan Miguel Subiri, as well as our minority floor leader, Senator Coco Pimentel, who happens to be both proud and renowned sons of the great Mindanao region for prioritizing our committee reports and allowing this representation to defend these important measures amid the very hectic legislative agenda. Warmest thanks to the officials of the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, or the OPAPRU, led by Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr., the National Amnesty Commission, led by Chairperson Attorney Lea Tanodra Armamento, and Commissioners Jamar Kulayan and Nasser Maruham Salik, 
as well as the officials from the Justice and National Defense Departments for their kind assistance and patience. Lastly, we wish to place on, on record upon the request of our good minority leader during the period of interpolation that we have already talked to the OPAPRU family and the committee will soon facilitate a briefing about the status of our peace agreements. Please expect an invitation from them soon. Thank you, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, this juncture, the distinguished gentleman from Nueva Ecija and Camarines Norte, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, is seeking the floor. May I move that he be recognized for his uh, short manifestation, Mr. President? Senator Padilla is recognized. Maraming salamat po, uh, Ginoong uh, Pangulo at uh, uh, Pinunong Mayuria. Uh, Ginoong Pangulo, meron pong uh, malungkot na pangyayari. Isa pong uh, pagluluksa ang nangyayari po sa mundo ng pelikulang Pilipino at telebisyon patungkol po sa bigla ang pagpanaw ng atin pong ginagalang at hinahangaan na artistang Pilipino na nagnangalang Jacqueline Jose. Siya po ay uh, kilala, siya po ay uh, masasabi nating award-winning. Siya po ay nagkaroon ng, ng uh, Best Actress Award sa Cannes Film Festival na kinikilala po sa buong daydig at nagbigay po sa atin ng karangalan sa bansang Pilipinas. At siya din po ay uh, naging parang profesora, teacher sa mga batang artista, inspirasyon sa mga batang artista, katulad po nila Coco Martin, katulad din po sa aking anak na si Kylie Padilla. Hinihingi ko po sa aking mga kasama dito sa Senado na maging kasama po kayo sa pakikiramay sa kanyang pamilya sa biglaang pagyao po ng ating hinahangaan at minamahal na si Jacqueline Jose. Kasama ko po dito uh, sa manifestasyon na ito ay uh, sila Senator Bong Rivilla Jr., Senator Jingo Estrada, Senator Grace Po, at sa lahat po ng mga senador na meron pong puwang sa puso ang mundo ng pelikulang Pilipino at telebisyon. Muli po, hinihingi ko po sa inyo ang pakikiramay po natin kay Mary Jane Santa Ana Gok, also known as Jacqueline Hussein. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Pangulo. Maraming salamat, Senator Padilla. Gusto din po natin na oh, sabihin na we are the Senate uh, extends his deepest condolences, sincerest condolences to the family of uh, our actress, the famous actress, award-winning actress Jacqueline Nose. And maybe in the proper time, we can pass a resolution honoring her uh, as soon as possible, maybe today, and invite the family so that we can turn over the... May I ask for a minute yes, suspension, Mr. President? May I ask for a minute suspension? Session suspended. Yes, Mr. President, we'd, we'd like to uh, state into uh, the records, Mr. President, that uh, uh, there's an overwhelming uh, support coming from the members of the Senate uh, to extend our deepest gratitude, thanks, and condolences to the family of the late uh, Ms. Jacqueline Jose, Mr. President. And at the proper time, we will uh, tackle, Mr. President, and pass a resolution of uh, commendation uh, celebrating the life of uh, the award-winning actress, Ms. Jacqueline Jose, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Majority Leader. Maram salamat. Thank you. Mr. President, Senator uh, Tolentino is also seeking the floor. May I move that he be recognized, Mr. President? Senator Tolentino, our distinguished colleague from the province of Cavite, is recognized. Yes, an anterior manifestation, Mr. President. I, I should have roast <laughs> when... Uh, ...recognized the distinguished sponsor, uh, the distinguished lady from Pangasinan, Iloilo, and San Juan, Senator Grace Poe, and to interpolate our minority leader, Senator Coco Pimentel. 
Our distinguished colleague from the provinces of Pangasinan, Iloilo, and San Juan City is recognized, Senator Grace Poe, and our distinguished colleague from the uh, city of Cagayan de Oro and Zambales on the mother's side, Senator Coco Pimentel is recognized. And Marikina. Yes, uh, Mr. President, I was, I was about to add that. Marikina, uh, yes, sir. So with the permission of our uh, sponsor, Mr. President, if I can commence with my interpolation on this measure. Uh, it is my pleasure, Mr. President, although I would like to ask for a little bit of a consideration. I, um, my thoughts are probably not as sharp because we had such a delicious uh, meal prepared by the uh, better half of our minority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyway, Mr. President, I think this is uh, this is a measure which uh, has been tackled here before, Mr. President, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Mr. President, this actually, this bill was passed by both houses. Um, as the minority leader knows, unfortunately, it's been vetoed by the, the president. So uh, if this was uh, previously vetoed by the president, uh, did we pay attention to the reasons advanced by the president in uh, vetoing this measure? Absolutely, Mr. President. And in fact, we endeavored to make it more transparent, more inclusive. And uh, for us, we addressed specifically also all the veto provisions. How many, uh, how many observations or objections did the Office of the President raise when uh, the President vetoed this particular measure, Mr. President? Uh, when, was the, when was this passed? In what Congress, Mr. President? This the previous was, one? This was passed in the previous Congress, Mr. President, but because we had the elections in 2020, uh, 2022, uh, with uh, before it lapsed into law, okay. it was uh, vetoed by this current administration. And we're talking about, I think, um, 11, ilang, ilang veto? I th I'm counting here. They may be uh, sub, uh, they may be a subject to uh, just one, one uh, point, but there are several subjects. So I'm counting around 11 subjects. 11 also. So we can more or, uh, we can say that the president raised more or less 11 points against the original uh, measure, Mr. President, passed in the 18th Congress. Tama po ba yan? If I'm not mistaken, 18th, no? 18th Congress. 18th Congress no? I will, uh, just a clarification: it's eight items. Eight, eight uh, points. Okay. Eight items, but then there's some sub subjects to some of the items. Apo. There is a related law. Uh, there is a law related to this eco zone. We we passed a law governing the airport itself, the Bulacan Airport itself. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, actually, the airport is a separate uh, law. It's a franchise, the first ever franchise for an airport that was granted to the Bulacan Airport. This one is an echo zone, as the minority leader understands, within, uh, within that airport zone. Um, now, it needs a separate law to establish uh, an economic zone. And so this is what this measure is really all about. Is the economic zone within the airport zone, or is the airport within the economic zone? Uh, uh, the airport is within the economic zone. So if we pass this law, can we say that give it uh, over that land area, the geographic location of the airport, there will be two laws applying? Yes, because um, I think there, there are two laws, but there are two different uh, mandates in the law. The first one is just govern, governing the businesses that will relocate to, their, to the echo zones. But of course, the, within the airport, there are laws governing also, let's just say, the sharing of the government in the revenue, what are the responsibilities of the airport operator, etc., which is obviously separate from the other provisions um, for the, the 
the clients that will relocate to the echo zones. There will be no uh, conflict between the two laws, uh, Mr. President? Um, Mr. President, I don't see it because the airport authority is a totally se separate entity. Mm -hmm. There are laws governing how an airport is run, and mm -hmm. we also strengthen that by reaffirming it in the, Bata uh, uh, the, in the Bulacan Airport franchise. With this one, uh, what we are doing, basically, we have covered the areas that will be included. Um, also, the board that will comprise the economic zone, the sharing, the compliance now. This is uh, one of the ways we address the veto. The compliance with uh, the agrarian reform program, the, com the compliance with uh, the create law, etc. So how many economic zones, Mr. President, have been created through law? Because uh, as I understand it, some economic zones are created through PESA uh, authority, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, let me count here how many we have so far. Uh, my, without the BAKSESFA, we have... Ito yung point, message. Yeah. Okay. Paano sinagot? Ito ba? Yes. So far, there are around nine economic zones all over the country, Mr. President. Nine uh, created by law? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, so. We have, well, as you know, SBMA, C Clark, AFAB, which is Bataan. Aurora, which is a PECO, Cagayan, CESA, PESA. Hindi po ba may pinasa rin tayong batas to rationalize the uh, incentives being given by the so-called economic zones na I think we refer to them as uh, investment uh, promotions agencies? Uh, Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. President. That's why we specifically mentioned that this will be compliant with CESA, with the CESA, uh, I'm sorry, with the, with the CREATE, CREATE law. So we are not, we are not in any way uh, touching or amending impliedly uh, any provision of the CREATE law, Mr. President. Pasok uh, siya sa, papasok po itong ating uh, Bulacan, Airport City Special Economic Zone and Freeport under the terms of the CREATE law? Yes, Mr. President, because that, uh, that was one item of the veto that needed to be addressed. So in the past, uh, there was no mention of a compliance with CREATE, but this time we specifically included it. Because it's in CREATE, one of the major uh, subjects of that bill was really rationalizing the creation of uh, new economic zones because they wanted, um, what do you call this, uh, to widen the tax base. So with this one, this is an exception. That's why we, we also had to weigh the opportunities and the possible revenue that it will be worth it to give them some sort of an incentive uh, and allow them uh, certain privileges under an economic zone setup. How large is the economic zone that we are uh, declaring in this measure, Mr. President? Um, Mr. President, I think 55,000 huh? hectares. Uh, and it comprises uh, several cities and... Uh, districts in Bulacan. Has it ever been done before, Mr. President, that uh, entire municipalities are made part of an economic zone? Uh, yes, Mr. President. In fact, we have one just recently, uh, Bataan, the AFAB, which we passed, I believe, last Congress. 17th Congress. 
And then we also have uh, with CESA, Mr. President, which in fact CESA enjoys more privileges than uh, this economic zone. And uh, the Bataan Eco Zone, if we, if we compare it with the other eco zones that were already established, will be at par with the uh, incentives uh, given to those. When, uh, when an entire municipality or LGU, Mr. President, is uh, declared a part of uh, an economic zone, uh, does this affect the power of the mayor to issue permits as well as of the Sangunian to uh, promulgate ordinances? Uh, Mr. President, actually it's not the entire province, but those that have been included in this, um, with regards to their powers that will be curtailed, they have actually a representation with, within the Bataan Economic Zone Board. So uh, these uh, LGUs will, not only will they maintain also um, some sort of influence or, or, or control, they will also receive a substantial amount in terms of revenue because there's a, a pie that will be divided. And compared to other economic zones, in this particular setup, the local government will actually get more in terms of the, the sharing of revenue. Does being, a, does being a part of an economic zone affect the powers of the Sangunian, of an LGU, Mr. President? I'm sorry, because, Mr. Because, going, going back to the last one, actually, uh, permits will still be issued by the local government unit. But once, once they relocate there, within that area, uh, the revenue sharing uh, for the other taxes that will be the local government is supposed to get. Um, anyway, what, what was your question? Um, can you repeat your question again? Um, uh, does being, uh, being a part of an economic zone affect the powers of the Sangunian of an LGU, which is made part of uh, an economic zone. Because as I understand the bill, hindi po ito that there are parts of a territory of an LGU which is uh, part of the economic zone. We made the entire, entire LGUs part of the economic zone, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would like to clarify that we're not clipping the powers of the local government. Uh, it will only be... A, after they secure the proper local government permits that are normally required, then they can register as a part of the economic zone. Uh, doesn't our bill uh, make entire municipalities part of the economic zone? Therefore, the entire municipality is an economic zone? Yes, Mr. President, but economic zone in terms of actually the revenue and also the incentives that they will be getting from being a part of the eco zone. And so this will be more for the national uh, government's um, revenue because once they're part of that economic zone, there are certain privileges, for example, a uh, lower tax rate, which is actually not given by the local government, but the national government. That's why- By this, the authority, by the, by by the, the zone authority. authority, yes. Right. That's why we are making this into a law because of all the incentives that are given to them is of a national, uh, 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 the nature of the national government, not the local government. So meaning to say all the existing, ex existing businesses or enterprises in an LGU declared as part of an economic zone may avail of the benefits of being an economic zone by applying before, before the authority. Kanan po ba yan? Yes, Mr. President. But remember, the, the, if they are, first of all, they need to be within the economic zone that we approve of. Okay. okay. Now, uh, within the BACSESFA, which is comprised of uh, several different members appointed by the President, uh, there is a representation from the, na the local government. Now, when they are approved by BACSESFA to relocate in that area, then yes, they will get those incentives from the national government.
will this not affect the uh, revenues or taxes due the LGU, Mr. President? No, Mr. President, in fact, I think it will be better. Number one, infrastructure will greatly improve uh, at no cost to the local government. Number two, in terms of property taxes, um, they will still be able to collect within their jurisdiction in the economic zone. Let's say, for example, Google or other companies, um, foreign companies or big companies, they plan to relocate because the infrastructure is already better. Normally, the local government wouldn't have that relocation because they're not ready to host such a huge industry. Uh, so now, not only will their income become bigger, it will become 10 times bigger than what they normally would have had they not had this big improvement in their area. It doesn't take much of a study to realize that uh, locators as well as the uh, downstream effects of uh, development like this will be invaluable in terms of the income generated for the local government. Because aside from the normal permits and taxes, etc., they will actually have a share from Baksesfa on the total revenue of this economic zone, which is, if I'm not mistaken, how many, how many percent of this? In income tax holiday period. Once their ITH expires and the, uh, they avail of the 5% uh, SCIT rate on GIE, LGUs may no longer collect local business tax and income including RPT. After SCIT period, the export enterprise will pay the regularly prescribed 24, 25% corporate tax rate. Domestic enterprises shall pay RPT, local business tax fees, charges, and mayor's permit during the ITH period and CIT with ED. After the CIT with ED period, the domestic enterprise will pay they regularly prescribe 24, 25% corporate tax rate. So this is after, yeah, this is exactly in create. So yung sunset clause, uh, kung mag apply na sa kanila. But, but right now, the benefit is they still pay, I mean, for the local government, they'll still receive all of those lo local business tax, etc. But in terms of other uh, business tax on income, they will have... Uh, some exemptions on the national government because they are a member of this uh, eco zone. Uh, so, uh, did this measure get the endorsement of the municipalities which are deemed included in the economic zone? Uh, yes, actually, Mr. President, a lot of them are very enthusiastic about having. Um, the relocation of the economic zone in the air. They know it will spur economic growth. They're, to be honest, what their concern is really uh, the, not for the powers of the local government to be diluted. Uh, you know that's so that's why I mentioned all of these other permits are still for them to be able to grant. But the difference, of course, is when it comes to the income of the export zone, uh, it is not just the area that determines it, it's also management, how it is run properly. That's why lo I think it's fair that local government, of course, doesn't get the entire pie, but they get 40%, which is still qu quite substantial. Uh, uh, it, it, isn't it a, the, fa the fact that they get 40% because they are also investing in the, they're supposed to also co contribute a certain sum, right? Um, it's not by virtue of being covered by the economic zone. They are contributing to the capital of the economic zone authority. Uh, Mr. President, they have an option to subscribe to the capital of Baksesfa, but that's not automatic. And whether they subscribe or not, um, it's within their jurisdiction. They can still avail of the, the benefits of having the relocators there. Now, it's not clipping their powers. As I mentioned, permits are still granted by them. And in fact, Mr. President, para tayo nag-uumpisa sa wala. Parang binibilang natin, uh, halimbawa na, hindi, pero kikita tayo ng ganito kung wala yung eco zone. Pero ngayon, wala naman din dun eh. So, dagdag ito. And, and for them to be able to generate that much um, investment, 
will be a huge burden and debt also for the local government to undertake. So that's why we always encourage also whenever possible and feasible a PPP because it's money not out of our pocket. But at the same time, para bang meron kang lupa, uh, pinalis mo yung lupa mo na yan, uh, magpapatayo ng building, meron ng infrastructure, um, hindi naman sa kanila yon pero nagbabayad sila sa yon ng, ng renta tuloy-tuloy. Kaya sa naman ikaw yung nagpagawa, may utang ka sa bangko, uh, oo nga sa'yo lahat pupunta yung kita, pero napakalaki naman ng sakit ng ulo rin sa inyo at hindi ka rin sigurado kung makukuha mo yung mga tenants na binabalak mo dun para sa lugar na yon uh, Kaya mala mas malaking sugal para sa inyo. Yung nabanggit pong 40% share ng mga municipalities declared as part of the economic zone. Is that by virtue of their being a part of the economic zone or by virtue of their capital investment in the authority? Kahit na wala silang capital investment, uh, hindi sila subscribe, um, they can still get the 40% entitlement uh, afforded to the local government just because that's their territory. But of course, if yes. they have a capital investment, above and beyond that, para kang bumili ng stock. Halimbawa, um, uh, Mr. President, um, San Miguel Corporation, nilis ang building mo. Uh, by virtue of them leasing it, you already get an income from that. So business permits, etc., in, uh, to, to equate it with the national government. But if you want to make more and you believe that that undertaking of that... Uh, Eco zone is a good thing. You invest. So if San Miguel makes money in stocks, you get your dividends. But that's above and beyond um, anything that is already entitled, that you're entitled to, which is the lease or the, the payment for that uh, property. That's in the measure, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, maybe you know uh, where in the measure that is, Mr. President? Uh, Section 11, Mr. President, on revenue sharing. Uh, Section 11, line 23, to ensure sufficient funds, Baksesva and the affected LGU shall be entitled to a share in the special corporate income tax or corporate income tax under the enhanced deduction regime mm -hmm. from all registered business enterprises. For this matter, the said corporate income tax collected shall be divided as follows. 40% to the national government, which shall be directly remitted to the national government. 20% uh, national government, provided that the revenue sharing under this section shall be considered compliance with Section 284 of the Local Government Code as amended and shall no longer be further divided for purposes of the national tax allotment. Um, dito yan, subsection C. 40% to the concerned local government, provided that the local government share from the revenues derived from Baksesfa registered locators who availed of incentives 11534 or the, or the CREATE in comp component cities or munis municipalities shall be allocated among the LGUs of the Bulacan Eco Zone using the formula under Section 285 of the Local Government Code of 1991 as amended. So we are compliant with all the existing laws that will uh, that pertain to the concerns also of the revenues for the local government units. And may we know, Mr. President, what LGUs in Bulacan would be part of the Bulacan Eco Zone? Mr. President? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Hold on, let me go to the list. Um, from Section B, we have uh, Section, sec Section 3B, uh, Malolos and Mekawayan, and of the municipalities of Bulacan, with a K, Paumbong, Giginto, Balagtas, Bukawe, Marilao, Obando, and Santa Maria in the province of Bulacan. And anything that is not yet included as a component part of the airport project and the airport city project, 
all other expansion areas of municipalities um, within the province of Bulacan and surrounding areas, which may be declared as part of the Bulacan Eco Zone, but with the President's approval, Mr. President. Mm. Pero ito yung mga nabanggit ko na areas na to, kasama na to, and naimbitahan po sila in several hearings. In fact, nap napasa na nga ito because the concern was not uh, so much the local government at the time. It was more the compliance with uh, certain revenue measures of the government. Para dun po sa mga cities, dalawang cities, Manolos and Maykawayan, and then municipalities, one, Bulacan, Paumbong, Giginto, Balagtas, Bukawi, Marilao, Obando, Santa Maria. So, eight. Two cities and eight municipalities specifically mentioned in our measure as part of the Bulacan Eco Zone. Were they consulted? That, and uh, and uh, did they give consent? And if consent was given, in what form, uh, Mr. President? Mr. President, um, some of the local officials, actually the mayors of those of those uh, provinces, actually attended our hearings. While the others who may not at have attended the the press, the current, the most current hearing here in the Senate, have attended in the past, and nobody has really sent a letter of objection or a position paper objecting to it. And um, most of them uh, actually submitted a position paper already, which is on file. Did they pass uh, ordinances uh, or resolutions uh, of concurrence, Mr. President? No, they didn't uh, have to pass those ordinances because, Mr. President, that, that's why we are actually uh, doing this um, as a law because it's also within the powers of, of Congress um, as well as the president later on, to, to declare an area and shall be issued for this purpose. But designating uh, echo zones in particular um, is what Congress does, like for those other echo zones, Mr. President. So for the, for the 10, uh, one, two, three, four, five. For the eight. Na, eight municipalities and two cities. So for the 10 LGUs, which we are specifically enumerating and naming in the measure, we did not secure any more an ordinance or resolution from the Sangonians of the 10 LGUs expressing their consent to be made part of the Bulacan Eco Zone. Just as a matter of fact, wala po. Yes, Mr. Apa. President, okay. consistent also with the creation of other Eco Zones. Um, it is actually the, the national government uh, superseded um, local government uh, approval because it is of national concern. But nothing would have uh, prevented us. Nothing prevents us from, from uh, asking them for resolution of consent. Um, in fact, Mr. President, uh, if you go through our hearings again, through their local representative, their mayors, they have expressed actually their support for this. Now, if there was an actual proceeding um, asking the rest of the members of the Sangunian, uh, we can ask for a copy of those, but it does not prevent us by law um, to designate their areas an echo zone because we actually did not take uh, anything from their source of income. In fact, we will add to it. And the reason why I'm asking this, Mr. President, is because of actually Section 3C. All other expansion areas or municipalities whose meets and bounds shall be clearly defined through a presidential proclamation within the province of Bulacan and surrounding areas, which may be declared as part of the Bulacan Eco Zone in compliance with Section 7E of this Act. And if you, if you look at Section 7E, it, is, it reads as follows. The areas comprising the Bulacan Eco Zone may be expanded or reduced when necessary through a presidential pro proclamation with the concurrence through local legislation by the concerned LGU. So I thought that was the uh, general rule, uh, Mr. President, or the rule that we also observed when we named the 10 LGUs in the measure, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, 
Um, that only applies to the expansion huh? of the That's episodes, when, not for the actual creation. So when we expand, we will now get the concurrence of the concerned LGU affected by the expansion through a local legislation. But when we established, we dispensed with the idea, uh, Mr. President? Well, Mr. President, I don't, I can't really uh, unilaterally say that we've dispensed because they are part of our hearings and in fact they have uh, not expressed their objection even during the past um, Congress when it was approved in both houses. And let's not forget that uh, the lower house actually has local representatives. Uh, they are more uh, representative of the particular districts that will be affected. And they are, if not uh, supportive of it and voted to ratify it, they are one of the ones that actually sponsored it. Yes, uh, Mr. President, except that the, the principle that we found in, that we find in Section 7E is that the concurrence must be through a local legislation by the concerned LGU. So and I think, at any uh, rate, uh, Mr. President, uh, our sponsor made it of record that the mayors uh, attended the hearings. Uh, unfortunately, there is also a pass there, 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 is a, there is a possibility that the mayor's sentiments may differ from the Sangguniaan's sentiment also, Mr. President. Is that correct? I mean, as our deputy majority leader who was uh, once upon a time a mayor, uh, Senator J.V. Ercito, is that correct? Is that possible? That the mayor's sentiment would be different from the Sangguniaan's uh, position on a certain issue? <laughs> yes, sir. So we make it of record that the Senator okay. J.V. is nodding his head, uh, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. President, I would also like to say that because when you expand, I don't, uh, it's more like the president will be able to declare the expansion. My understanding is it won't anymore go through this type, type of process of legislation because it's merely an expansion. That's why uh, to have uh, better authority on it and justification, in the expansion part, which doesn't have to go through congressional hearings and approvals like this, they really need the local government approval or the Sangunian. Um, the LGU's concern, concurrence. concurrence, was not required from LGUs in other ECU zones, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. President. Besides the local regional development mayor support um, council, uh, composed of mayors support this measure. But the RDC, of course, uh, they come from different areas. So we cannot, that's not the council of the um, municipal council. At any rate, Mr. President, uh, we were just pointing, uh, pointing out the principle in 7E. So and, uh, when, we, when we continue the interpolation, Mr. President, this representation would want to go one by one, one by one uh, uh, for each of the eight objections presented by the president against the original bill. And then para pakita natin how we address the, the objections of the office, office of the president so that there will be no more expectation that this measure will again be vetoed by the president because the president who vetoed the earlier measure is the same president, the, the, the incumbent, the current president, Mr. Mr. President, is that, that's correct. That's a statement of fact. I, I agree, and I, and I thank our minority leader uh, for making sure that we are very thorough in addressing those veto concerns because that's really the key to be able to pass this or at least uh, have the confidence that we've already addressed those specific concerns. So at this point, Mr. President, if I can suspend my interpolation and then when we resume uh, one by one uh, the, the eight matters raised by the president, we will tackle uh, one by one, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, Thank, you, Mr. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Distinguished yeah, sponsor. There being an objection, motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we recognize the sponsor of the measure, Senator Wynne Gachalian, for his individual amendments. Uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, our distinguished colleague, sponsor of the measure is recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, on page 6, line 17, <sighs> 
before the words <coughs> real property, insert the words the PVSN. And so move, Mr. President. There have been objection, motions approved. On page seven, lines two to three, delete the phrase including the development and maintenance of internationally dash accepted valuation standards, comma. As so move, Mr. President. There have been objection, motions approved. On page seven, line 12, delete the word maintain and replace it with the word gather. As so move, Mr. President. There have been objection, motions approved. Maybe you can proceed to the other amendments. Yes. On page nine, line 18, before the phrase in the practice, delete the word active and insert the word active before the word practice. I so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection and motions approved. On page nine, line 19, delete the word off and replace it with the word as a. I so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection and motions approved. On page nine, line 19, delete the word appraisal and replace it with the word appraiser. I see, uh, so move, Mr. President. There have been objection, amendment approved. On page nine, line 19, after the word years, insert the phrase prior to his or her appointment as a member of the consultative committee, comma. I so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection, amendments approved. On page nine, line 23, after the word assessors, comma, delete the word end. I so move, Mr. President. There have been no objection, amendments approved. On page 9, line 23, after the word sector, <coughs> insert the phrase comma and the real estate sector. I so move, Mr. President. There be no objection. Amendments approved. Uh, Mr. President, just to insert into the records, Mr. President, the inclusion of a representative from the private business sector to be a member of the consultative committee. Sorry. Uh, Mr. President, the inclusion of, of a representative from the real estate sector to be a member of the consultative committee is a proposed amendment from the good gentleman from Sorsogon, Senator Chisa Scudero. We Just put that on record, Your Honor. On page 15, line 4. So page 10, no amendment. 12, no amendment. Page yes. 14, no amendment. Yes, correct, Mr. Yes. President. Page so 15. we go to page 15. Page 15, line 4, after the word explanation, Delete the word on and replace it with the word for. I so move, Mr. President. There have be been no objection. Amendments approved. So we go to page 18, Mr. President. Page 18, line 1. Delete the words or revisions. I so move, Mr. President. There have be been no objection. Amendments approved. On page 18, line 1. Delete the word concern. I so move, Mr. President. There have be been no objection. Amendments approved. On page 18, line 2, delete the word end and replace it with the words comma which shall. I so move, Mr. President. There have been objection. Amendments approved. Page 18. 18. <coughs> oh, yeah. on, on page 18, line 12, after the phrase in accordance with, insert the words the PVS. I so move, Mr. President. There have been objection, amendments approved. On page 18, line 14, after the words impact studies, comma, insert the words including the preparation of the revenue and tax impact report, comma. As a move. There have been no objection, amendments approved. On page 19, lines 3 to 4, delete the phrase in the case of government agencies and instrumentalities, comma. As a move. There have been objection, amendments approved. On page 22, Mr. President, on page 22, line 12, <coughs> after the word tax, insert the following proviso. Colon, provided, comma, that the maximum assessment levels in section 218 of RA number 7160, comma, otherwise known as the open code, local government code of 1991, close code, Comma shall be observed. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection. Amendments approved. Subject to style. And that is an amendment from Senator Chisa Scudero as well. So on page uh, 23, line 9, after the word being, insert the word paid. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection. Amendments approved. On page 23, line 11, delete the second S in the word subjects. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection. Amendments approved. No other amendments, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Singh Rushkali.
Mr. President, Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 2386. I assume, Mr. President. There being objection, motion is moved. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, Senator Tiberas would like to avail of the privilege hour. I move that she be, rec be recognized. Our distinguished colleague, Senator, the Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise on a point of personal and collective privilege. Mr. President, nung isang taon po, tayo bilang isang kongreso ay nagsulong at nagpasa ng isang batas na naglalayong magpalaya sa mga magsasaka mula sa tanikala ng mabigat na utang at buwis. I supported and continue to support Republic Act No. 11953 or the Agrarian Emancipation Law. Nung kanyang State of the Nation Address, sabi ng Pangulo, quote, Agrarian reform must continue, close quote. Kamakailan lang, nitong Pebrero 2024, sa Karaga Region, sabi ni Presidente, quote, layunin kong matapos ang pamamahagi ng lupang saklaw ng Agrarian Reform Program bago matapos ang aking termino, close quote. Ngunit sa mga nakalipas na linggo at buwan, ang aking opisina ay nakatanggap na mga nakababahalang mga report mula sa people's organizations on the ground of what appears to be a pattern of agrarian reform reversals and land reconsolidation. Isang halimbawa itong kaso sa Pampanga, sa barangay Anunas at Kuwayan. 1998 at 1999 pa lang, panahon ni na dating Presidente Ramos at Presidente Estrada nung nabigay ang kanilang mga Certificate of Land Ownership Award o CLOA. Sa mahabang panahon, maagap na nagbabayad ang mga magsasaka hanggang sa na fully paid po nila. At ang katibayan nito ay yung Certificate of Full Payment and release of estate mortgage na issued po ng Land Bank of the Philippines. Kaso, lingid sa kanilang kaalaman, nagkasanglaan na pala ng lupa na bungakala nila ay sa kanila at binabayaran nila ng maayos at tiwala sa sistema. Ilang palit kamay na mga may-ari, may ama ko, may National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation, may Vive Eagle Land, may Cavacon, hanggang sa napunta sa Clark Hills Properties Corporation. Ngayon po ay may notice of demolition at ginagamitan ng dahas ang mga magbubukid para sila ay mapaalis sa kanilang lupa. I was very alarmed at the photos and videos I saw of the violence wrought against these farmers and residents of the area. May isa, may dalapang itak at sinaksak ang isa sa mga residente doon na senior citizen. De baril ang mga empleyado ng Clark Hills na pumupunta sa lugar at naninira ng bahay. Mula sa Pampanga, dako naman po tayo sa Nasugbo, Batangas, sa Asienda, Paliko, Banilad at Kailaway na pagmamayari ng Rojas and Company. Matagal na din po nabigay ang kanilang kloa, halos kasabay ng pagpasa ng CARP noong 1988. At matagal na din po sa iba't ibang paraan, sinubukang hadlangan ang maayos na implementasyon ng reformang agrario, kasama na ang pag-file ng application for conversion sa Asienda Paliko at Banilad. Nagpatuloy ang DAR sa pag-cover ng lupa, Pero hindi po naging maayos ang pagsunod sa tamang procedure ng acquisition ang DAR. Samantalang ang mga magsasaka ay tuloy-tuloy na naniria, naninirahan sa lupang natanggap sa ilalim ng programa ng reformang panakahan. Because of the issues of mode of payment, the Supreme Court in 1999 ruled that the DAR issued CLOAS without just compensation 
to Rojas and Company and nullified the acquisition proceedings over the three haciendas. The case was remanded to DAR for proper acquisition proceedings. Natulog ang kaso ng ilang dekada. Sabi po ng RA 6657, as amended by RA 9700, pag umabot ng 10 years ang titulo, ay indefeasible na at di na mababawi. Ngayon, biglang bumulaga sa mga Agrero Uniform Beneficiaries o ARBs ang balita na kailangan na nilang lisanin ang lupa at lumipat sa ibang lupa. This is based on the so-called win-win solution of Consolidated Order Number 6, which divides the land holdings 50-50, but apportions to the ARBs the less desirable areas of the land holding. According to the ARBs my office spoke with, the CLOA holders from all three haciendas may be relocated to a parcel of land on Barangay Paliko without electricity or potable water at hindi man lang sila mismo ang nakonsulta sa kung paano ang magiging hatian ng lupa. What do these two cases have in common, Mr. President? Perhaps if analyzed using the strict technicalities of the law, the actions of the duty bearers and perhaps even some actions of the landowners are valid. Ngunit sa mga legal na teknikalidad na ito, Wala pong kinalaman ang magsasaka. Ano ba ang malay nila na pinagsasangla na ang lupa nila ng dating may-ari? Ano ang alam nila sa proseso ng DAR sa acquisition mula sa landowner? Basta alam nila sila nagbabayad ng amilyar sa gobyerno. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court sa kaso sa Nasugbu, quote, It goes against the basic precepts of justice, equity, and fairness to deprive these people through no fault of their own to the land they till, close quote. Mr. President, hindi po sila ang nagkulang. Wala po silang sala, pero sila ang papasan. That the law is a great equalizer is a myth, Mr. President. When one party has more resources than the other, when one party has access to lawyers who can help navigate the system, that tilts the scales in their favor. Sabi nga ng isang ARB sa Pampanga, ni Nuno pa namin ang nagpupunla sa lupang iyan, pero wala kaming kalaban-laban kasi hindi kami mayaman. There is a pattern, Mr. President, at hindi lang po ito sa nakaupong dar ngayon. This appears to be a systematic pattern that beleaguers our agrarian reform program. In Mauban, for example, 62 farmers are about to lose their lands due to CLOA cancellation, due to a fictitious exemption order. Bakit ko po nasabing fictitious? The affected farmers obtained a copy of a certification from the DAR that states that the said application for exemption has no file on record. In Maliwalo, Tarlac, 11 farming families who got 14 hectares of what was supposed to be a 60 hectare PD27 covered area were surprised to find their cloas cancelled. This was after 36 hectares were already sold by the previous landowner and after the retention of 10 hectares was granted to the landowner. The reason for the cancellation was the grant of yet another retention covering the land subjected to agrarian reform. In Sariaya, hundreds of farmers and farm workers will be displaced after the CLOAs of 87 agrarian reform beneficiaries were cancelled. The lands were exempted from the agrarian reform program due to the reclassification of the land into non-agricultural use 
before the CARP was enacted, according to the Supreme Court. Kaya, daing ng magsasaka, sana masilip ulit ang kasong ito ng Presidential Agrarian Reform Council. There are so many more ways that CARP is being sought to be evaded, Mr. President. Noong nakaraang linggo lang, dumalaw ako sa mga magsasaka ng ECJ holding sa Negros Occidental. Agrarian reform beneficiaries sila, pero pinilit pumirma ng kasunduan o joint venture agreement sa ECJ Corporation para sa gamit ng lupa. Ang siste, kahit sila ang may-ari ng lupa at nagtatrabaho nito, 70% ang napupunta sa korporasyon at 30% ang sa kanila. 800 pesos kada buwan, mas o menos, ang nati-take home nila. Kulang na kulang para sa kanilang pamilya. Matagal na panahon na po akong kumikilos at naninindigan para sa ating kanayunan. Mula sa mga magsasaka at mangingisda ng Punta Halahala Rizal, kung saan ako unang nag-community organizing, mga magbubukid ng sumilaw na matagumpay na naglakad mula bukid nun hanggang Maynila, mga magnunyog ng Bondok Peninsula, Quezon, na patong-patong ang kasong kriminal ng mga landowner para lang sagkaan ang agrarian reform, hanggang sa mga magtutubo ng negros na nakaranas ng matinding karahasan habang ginigiit nila ang kanilang karapatan, malinaw sa akin na ang laban para sa lupa ay hindi madaling laban. Batid ko at batid ng marami ang iba't ibang paraan para sila ay gantsohin at apihin. Kadalasan din, hindi natin ito nakikita o napapansin, lalo na tayong nasa Manila dahil malayo sa atin. Malayo sa bituka, ika nga. Mr. President, hindi naman natin sinisisi ang nakaupong dar ngayon because this is a systemic problem that crosses administrations. Ilang taon, ilang dekada ng kapabayaan. What is clear is that we owe an historical debt to our farmers. May utang tayo sa magbubukid. May utang tayo sa kanayunan. Sabi ni Presidente, he will seek permanent solutions to the issues that hound agrarian reform and its implementation. Let us start by addressing these patterns of injustice. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Maraming salamat, Senator Risa, uh, our distinguished minority floor, our uh, deputy minority floor leader. Mr. President, I move that we refer the privileged speech of Senator Tiberos and all the, uh, to the Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform. I so move, Mr. President. There be no objection to the motion. The motion is approved. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move that we proceed to the Senate President's designation of Senate Conferees, the Bicameral Conference Committee, on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 2492 and House Bill Number 7819, both pertaining to the Philippine Maritime Zones Act. On the following members are hereby designated by the Senate to the uh, Senate conference to the bicameral conference committee on the disagreement provisions of Senate Bill Number Two Four Nine Two and House Bill Number Seven Eight One Nine. At sa naging isyong ito, ano ang iyong naging reaksyon? Magkimalaya magbigay ng kanilang personal opinion sa comment section. Anyways, for more Chikabay updates, don't forget to like and subscribe!